Hello everyone, welcome back to the Project Art. In this week's episode, we're going to do a painting and crafting tutorial of a blacksmith's house. So this is kind of a project I've been kind of putting off, uh, mainly because I wasn't quite sure how exactly I was going to complete it. Uh, so this is definitely going to be a two-part series. Uh, I really don't like doing two-part series. Uh, but some of these larger projects are very time consuming and uh, this particular project I decided to do the interior as well as the exterior. So I want to be able to play through the entire house and I'm going to make it a two story house. Uh, so I pretty well have done all the bottom floor and the outside, I built the forge. Uh, and uh, that's all completed and that will all be in this video. Uh, this next video I'll do will be the upper floors and the uh, the roofing and and all those kind of things. I kind of want to do like a kind of a roof over the forge too, like an overhang. Uh, so that's something else I want to create uh, in that second episode. But let's take a look at what I've completed uh, so far. So this is it right here. Uh, and I spent a lot of time doing a technique I've never done, uh, painting I would call light effects. So making it look like the forge is running here and creating shadows and creating light uh, on this piece. So even in the daylight, like right now, uh, not with the lights turned off, uh, it definitely has a, a look to it like uh, this, this forge is running. So also I wanted to have light in the forge. So I'll just tip it forward here and just show you. And we're gonna create this also in this episode. Uh, and uh, I kind of put some coals in there uh, and I created a light source on the bottom. Uh, so even if the lights are off, this forge is still running. Uh, so I kind of wanted, I did it uh, both uh, ways, uh, two different things I've never done before. So then you got the interior here and I built this staircase. Now, it doesn't seem like much of a staircase, but I've never actually done a staircase as well. So this actually came up pretty good. I'm kind of happy with this, uh, this staircase. So this is another uh, thing we're gonna be building in this episode. So this is pretty much uh, the bottom floor, uh, the base, uh, the forge, uh, and that's what we're gonna build in here. Uh, and in the second episode, I'm gonna build the second floor. Uh, and this is that overhang I was talking about, kind of going over top of this area here. Uh, and that's kind of trapping the light in here. So that's also why I wanted to paint it uh, this way. So a blacksmith is a good versatile piece of terrain. It can be used all sorts of games. Uh, I'm probably going to use it in Blood and Valor, Blood and Plunder, uh, you know, even Blood and Steel. But this would be a great uh, piece of terrain for Dungeons and Dragons uh, or even Warhammer or anything like that. Uh, fantasy related uh, game as well. Uh, again, moving into that, uh, you know, more versatile piece of terrain that I can use for all sorts of things. Just kind of slap it in whatever game I kind of want to play. I kind of stayed into the Tudor style, uh, but, uh, you know, it could be 17th, 18th century and definitely it fits in the fantasy world. All right, so that's what we're building today. So if you guys like what we're doing here in the Putter Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Putter Den and get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, uh, let's get down to the table, let's start painting, and let's start crafting. Okay, started with uh, this project with some dollar store foam board and some insulation foam. Uh, it really is just the planning stage. Um, I cut that shape, uh, it's kind of like a chimney shape out of uh, that insulation foam, sanded it down. Uh, and really, as you can see, I'm just kind of uh, placing all the pieces. I kind of uh, just, uh, at this point decided I was going to do a Tudor style building, two story. Uh, and then I was going to kind of have a, like a side roof over top of where the forge is. Uh, the forge is facing outwards, uh, not into the building. So I kind of cut that opening out uh, to, me, to the chimney here. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to use an X-Acto blade. And it kind of uh, made a little diamond pattern, really. Uh, and uh, I'm going to use my tweezers to pull out all these pieces. So this is kind of how I dig holes into uh, insulation foam. 
Uh, I just kind of pick it out with tweezers. And then I ended up using some sandpaper just to kind of smooth it out. So then I started working on the base and decided I wanted to put some light in that forge. And this is something I really haven't done before. I've used tea lights before, but never as a... Uh, but kind of making it so you can keep reusing them. And I made a little ledge around the base. That way the tea light uh, can sit on the bottom of it. Uh, so then I realized I need a lot of bricks for this project. Um, I do recommend that uh, I think in the future uh, I'm just going to have a whole bunch of bricks built on the side. Um, I've seen other people do that. They just have bricks and timbers and all sorts of stuff. Uh, so just showing you, I'm going to shake them in a coffee tin and then I'm going to start uh, putting around the base. Um, I'm just going to build kind of a stone platform for this whole forge. And then I'm showing you that I glued those two pieces together. And I, I already put a hole in the, the bottom of that uh, part of the forge. And then I'm putting bricks all over the top of it. So now I'm going to start addressing the walls. So I got my dollar store foam board. I've texturized it with a tinfoil ball. Measured it out with my minis as I always do uh, to make sure everything looks right. Uh, there's my main entranceway doorway. Uh, and I wanted to make a little small window. And uh, so I'm just kind of planning out all my stages. So you can see I've, I've cut a hole also in the base of this uh, where the forge is sitting. And that's where, that's where the tea light's going to come through the bottom. And I've made it the right height so the tea light sits nicely on, on the ground uh, and underneath there perfectly. So I'm just showing you I added all the bricks to that uh, chimney stack. And I've pretty well completed that. And then I plan on cutting all the windows out with that uh, X-Acto blade. And, of course, the doorway and uh, main entranceway window. So then, uh, like I've done in previous builds, and uh, I started using balsa wood to frame the inside of the windows and door frame. Now, this really gives it a nice straight look uh, and uh, really finishes it off nicely. So I kind of skipped a few steps here. Uh, all I did was put balsa wood in there and I, I used a, a bunch of uh, different uh, like coffee stir sticks and match sticks to make the framing of the windows. I made a foam door with a bead on it uh, and I just kind of glued those all into place. So I kind of did it with a little different window design this time. Uh, and, uh, now I plan on painting them, uh, with black craft paint. And this is, uh, the reason why I'm doing this is I'm going to add, uh, some of that, uh, glass like I did last time, uh, on that destroyed building. Uh, here's a piece of it. So this is just a piece of plastic you get on a packaging. You know, like when you get an action figure, it comes in a plastic. It's just that plastic. I just cut it up. I have sheets of it left from, uh from uh, some Christmas tea lights, actually, <laughs> I got. Uh, and uh, I've actually got quite a large piece, so I'm just going to keep using that. So I, I wanted to paint it, so when I... Because uh, I can't paint it once I put the glass in, so that's why I painted the frames first. And then I put the glass in, and then I put the uh, matchstick behind the glass, and then I pan on painting that black. Uh, that way the glass sits in there nice uh, and uh, you, you, I can actually uh, paint the frames properly. So then I went back and got those last few pieces I added. Uh, and then I made a whole bunch of bricks. Just cut it with my X-Acto blade. I'm going to shake them up in this tin. Uh, and I made a whole bunch of popsicle sticks and texturized them. So I'm not really going to show you all that. Uh, I've done this in several other episodes. All right, so this is after I'm kind of starting to plan out uh, gluing everything together and what it's going to look like. Uh, so I've kind of built all those pieces on the base. And all the windows are in. I left the back uh, plane. Uh, I am going to put a staircase going up that wall, so I didn't put a window in that area uh, to lead to because I do plan on doing the interior. Now, when I put those walls up, I, I should show you the hot glue gun. I usually glue gun it partially and use uh, white glue for part of it as well. Uh, and then once I got the walls up, I put uh, those balsa wood uh, in the corners. Uh, and then I started adding all the popsicle stick uh, panels in there on the floor. 
So I grab my tinfoil ball again and texturize the outside, uh, you know, the base everything's sitting on. Uh, and then I used a pencil or you could use a dowel. And I just kind of uh, drew out a brick pattern. I've done this before. I did it on the bridge build. I sometimes do it this way. Uh, you know, I contemplated using eggshell cartons and I've done that in the past. Uh, but there's a few other things I wanted to do on here and for uh, time constraints and I just went with a pencil instead. So this is after I've completed all the uh, brick pattern. I've added all the bricks to the uh, base of everything uh, and then I'm going to start moving to add popsicle sticks to the corners. So I kind of want to uh, finish off these corners so they don't look like two pieces of foam glued together. I have to hide those seams uh, and I usually use a uh, two popsicle sticks and then I put a, a, a match stick in the exact corner and it makes a perfect corner. So I kind of showed you on that one there. So I, I wasn't sure what kind of uh, style of, uh, so I knew I was going to do a Tudor style building, but I wasn't sure what kind of design. Uh, Tudor style buildings have several different uh, layouts of boards and patterns on the outside and and I also put that uh, square piece in the in the back there, which I plan on uh, putting some kind of design or symbol. So then I moved on to making an anvil and hammer. Uh, it can't be a blacksmith if you don't have that. So I kind of just made it out of a matchstick and some foam, carved that up, and sanded it a little bit, made it near the forge. So I'm just pointing out that square piece again. So it'll be some kind of sign. Uh, I'm sure it'll have an anvil in it because <laughs> it's a blacksmith's place. But uh, some kind of crest I uh, definitely want to work on. So just kind of showing you the whole layout. So these are the stairs I built. Now, there's lots of different ways you can build stairs. Uh, but I, I, I think I just went with some foam, cut out the stair shape, and then I'm going to cover it with uh, bricks. Uh, in wooden planks and then I kind of made just a small like railing on the one side uh, so just kind of pretty uh, rudimentary pretty basic um, didn't want to make it uh, too complicated um, and but I think this will be sufficient now I made the the steps wide enough uh, so you can fit a mini on it uh, of course I mostly play blood and valor and blood and plunder so they do fit that, uh, but they would fit a, some kind of miniature for Dungeons and Dragons or something. I'm sure they all have a very similar base size, uh, and they would be able to fit them on the stairs, no problem. So I'm just showing you all, after I've completed all that, uh, I moved on to adding the black craft paint. So this is kind of the first step of the painting. Even though we already have painted the doorway and some of the framing work, um, now we're going to cover all the pieces in the black craft paint, as I always do. And from there, I moved to the real brown uh, and uh, bark brown. So I'm going to kind of really uh, speed through this process, uh, mainly because I've done this uh, in several videos. Uh, and so we're just going to kind of discuss it here. I put the real brown first and the bark brown, uh, and then we're going to catch it on the other side after I've finished painting that. So really, I just dry brushed it, just, just so you know what kind of technique I used. Uh, so that's the uh, Peblo, <clears throat> and it's an orange color, uh, and really I want to add a lot of that on here, especially around the forge. Uh, so this is kind of the beginning stages of uh, those light effects I was talking about at the intro. Um, I really wanted to add a lot of orange to around the forge and then around the doorway, uh, and the anvil there because that's kind of where the light would be coming off of uh, that forge and hitting all those different areas so of course i do plan on covering the entire piece in pueblo but uh more orange in certain areas so i'll show you that in a minute just going to kind of give you an overview of everything as you can see i've added i like that orange color in there especially when you're doing the stonework uh like after you're putting the camel on there I like having a little bit of that orange and brown sticking out uh, under all those other uh, beige colors. So I'm just kind of showing you that I plan on doing all the stone with that uh, camel. And that's really the beginning of the stonework. So I moved to a smaller brush uh, just to get a little more finer details uh, opposed to my larger uh, brush that I cover a lot of surfaces with. 
uh, being a little more precision work here uh, as I want to really direct where I'm putting that uh, Pueblo. All right, so this is me adding that camel on. I gotta get that brickwork done first. Now, I kind of uh, thinking that I might have uh, probably finished the brickwork first, but it worked out okay uh, before starting to do the uh, light effects. Uh, but I think you have to build it up in layers, and, and I was okay doing it the way I did it uh, with uh, adding the orange on there first. Right now you can't see that because I'm still doing the caramel uh, and just showing you a, a different technique where I, I'm kind of just rubbing the brush flat on the surface here, and it's just touching some of the edges uh, opposed to wiping it. It's just a different way of doing it, uh, especially if you're doing the, when you carve out the, it, it was uh, pencil, it's pretty flat and that technique works better to highlight things. All right, so this is what I was getting at uh, with the Pablo. So this is really the beginnings of uh, making those light effects. So you can see I've kind of just hitting the edges, making it fairly orange on, on the top here, uh, and kind of blending its way up to the to the top of the chimney. And now I'm going to add it to the edges of the doors, some on the ground, on the anvil, all the places I think uh, all the light would have come and touched. So I'm going to hit a few different areas. And of course, lots of it in the center as well, at the back of the chimney, and adding a lot of that color. So before I get too carried away with the light effects, I move to uh, finishing the stonework. So the desert yellow, skeleton bone, necrotic flesh, and mummy robe. Uh, those are my standard four colors I use to make stone. And then I add some uh, skeleton horde contrast paint on there just to give it a kind of a dirtied up, uh, muddied look on certain areas. Uh, and that, that really just uh, finishes my entire stonework. So I'm not going to cover too much around the forge on the bottom there because I want to keep those nice uh, colors that we're building there. So this is after I've done all the stonework. Uh, and then you can see that the forge area is still pretty well uh, the same with that orange. I didn't want to uh, mess around with that too much. Uh, but uh, we're going to move on to the, the, the floor here first. So that's uh, real brown and um, yellow ochre. Uh, mix the two together. And I've done this before on uh, the fort build and uh, blockhouse. That's pretty much uh, my standard now for uh, uh, wood planks on the in inside or on a fort or something like that. So uh, really, uh, I'm just going to show you a little bit of this technique. Uh, and uh, just a reminder that everything on this comes in really bright when you put it on. And, and like I said before in previous episodes, don't panic too much. It'll dry darker. But I'm just kind of showing you, I, I kind of really just slap the color in the center and then again, uh, I just work it out to the sides. I just want to give it that uh, aged wood look worn down inside the uh, actual house itself on the main floor here. I will do the same technique on the stairs as well, uh, painting the, those stairs the same color. So that's after uh, I've completed it. I did go back and add just yellow ochre on its own and uh, touch the center up a little bit more too. So it still looks really bright here because all my paints are wet. Um, if you've been watching my videos, you know I like to move things uh, and just keep on painting. So that's uh, Crusted Sore. Uh, and <laughs> I think this is the Crusted Sore of this episode. I decided to use this color and I was kind of wanting to go with uh, some kind of burgundy or red or and I thought, oh, that looks great on the bottle. That's perfect. I want to do something like that. You know, I have lots of buildings with different colors. And I, I didn't have really, I wanted something a little bit more burgundy. Uh, but what ended up happening when I put this paint on, it turned purple. Uh, and I really did not like it at all. Uh, but now I have this purple on there. So I decided to add this dragon red on top of it. And they can see the giant explosion that happened. So I got some of my necrotic flesh over there. Uh, and this baby just blew up. It must have had something plugged on the end of it. Uh, and I was pushing too hard. And anyways, it was a disaster. <laughs> it's just a mess. 
So anyways, I had all this red paint, so then I kind of skipped over to starting doing more light effects. And really all I did was add the red in there and blending it in, the same way I applied the Peblo. And then I used some of that yellow ochre that was left on my palette uh, for uh, starting to edge the, the light. So I kind of went, as you can see, around the edges of the forge. I wouldn't have gone to that step uh, if I wouldn't have blown up that paint. But I used the rest of it to cover up that ugly uh, crusted sore. So then I moved to a dark gray, morphang brown, ash gray, uh, white, uh, and then some uh, matte black. And these are uh, the colors I'm going to use to, uh, you know, darken those stones with some, uh, it definitely would be soot at the top of that uh, chimney, uh, and cover up all the planks. So I did that, and this is after I've added all those. And that's kind of the aged wood colors I added. You can see I've added all that uh, aged wood look. And then I went back and brightened up the centers of that red uh, with that uh, a pure red. It's a really uh, a much brighter red. Uh, and it just because I wanted to add that contrast in there. And, and I used some of that pure red also. I uh, went back and hit some of that areas around the forge. And added more color in there. You can see I've added quite a bit of red in there now. Uh, and I just showed you I glued the stairs in. So at this point I had painted everything. And I wasn't going to add any more colors to the stairs. So I added that in there. So then I used my dry brush and did black. So the black added shadows around uh, where the anvil was and where the forge is. So you can see I've added shadows in there. Uh, so when the light hits on there, of course, the Advil would create a shadow, and then right beneath it, below the forge, it would be completely black. So I wanted to add those shadows in. So then I moved to the lava orange, uh, and this is the uh, a, a yellow. Uh, it's a dynamic uh, yellow. It's a really bright yellow. Uh, and really this is going to where I'm going to really start edging out uh, the shape. So around the doors, on the edge of the wall, and the anvil, and then on the floor. So this really gives it that uh, dramatic uh, light color. Uh, you can see those shadows. Uh, I really like the way the shadow looks on there. Uh, so I, I kind of just was fussy about this. I just kept going back, adding a little bit of orange here, a little bit of red here. Uh, and I was just trying to hit the edges of these bricks because the light would have hit so, uh, certain edges of these bricks. And you can see I added that yellow to the handle of the door. And I did put some black behind the handle. So it created uh, the illusion of a shadow there. Uh, and did a lot of uh, uh, edge work with that uh, that bright yellow. Uh, and left that shaded area. I, I was really happy how this turned out. Uh, uh, it came out good. So then I wanted to address the inside of the forge. So I knew I needed to cover that hole and uh, and cover where the tea light's going to come out. Now the tea light, I just took off the candle part of the end of it, so I just have the light part. Uh, and I got this... Uh, it's kind of a like plastic wrapping paper that I would use on a, you know, a gift basket or something like that. And I cut a few squares out because um, I wanted to have a red color coming through there. So I ended up using this Gorilla Glue and I glued two of those pieces on top of each other. So two of those uh, sheets of plastic. So I, I only show you one there, but I added another one on top of that. Uh, and then I glued all those beads on top. They're just plastic beads. They're clear. Uh, and uh, that's what I plan on using as uh, as my ambers inside the uh, forge. So, of course, I wanted to add some more colors to it. I added uh, um, that uh, dynamic yellow again, the, uh, the uh, lava orange, and I used some pure red, and then I covered it with some, with some matte black. And this is just to give those uh, beads a more amber feel to it. Now, don't paint the center. Uh, I left that to, with some red wash. That way the lights will shine through there properly. All right, so let's take a final look at the uh, forge, uh, the half-built uh, <laughs> blacksmith's house. We got some uh, French pirates here uh, running through the forge here. Uh, just going to real close-up look at uh, all the the uh, 
light details we added and here's the forge lit up got it turned on really happy how that uh, that turned out there's the uh, staircase uh, it's gonna become more prominent uh, on the next episode so uh, pretty happy all that interior uh, finished up too all right, if you guys like what we're doing here in the Planet End, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Planet End to get first-hand information when we start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.